the need for a well-structured, functional, and responsive emergency care system has never been more glaring than during the COVID-19 pandemic. One of uh, the strategic approaches in our AMS strategic plan and policy is uh, to improve our response at the scene where emergencies occur and also to improve the transportation or the ambulance response time to patients and also improve the care that is being given at the health facility level uh, and then also the other one is to improve the overall system so that it is resilient. And we're here in Uganda as technical partners and collaborators with the Ministry of Health of Uganda. And so during COVID, our folks were sitting at the table with the ministry and in the pillars and trying to problem solve with them. And it became obvious that the response to the epidemic needed more in terms of patient care. They had no good way of figuring out which patients needed care first. Uh, under the case management pillar and through the emergency medical services pillar, which I co-chair uh, with the commissioner, we quickly realized the key gaps that had also been raised during the emergency care systems assessment for the country. Uh, during our meetings with the, the case management pillar that included many partners, we did raise some of these issues. The Infectious Diseases Institute received funding from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to implement three objectives. One of the things that we were able to achieve was a strong partnership. And so a range of partners provided technical expertise as well as training support to ensure that cascades of trainings to healthcare workers around the country were possible. But where we have been closely um, linked to the emergency medical services of recent was uh, when CDC came in to support the component of uh, referrals um, with support from CDC and the, through IDI, we drew up uh, the UTATs for Uganda and from there um, we trained together with uh, the regional emergency medical services coordinators. The project was able to deploy six emergency medical services coordinators to support the regions of Arua, Kampala Metropolitan, Jinja, Mbale, Fort Porto, and Lira. Before the EMS project, each of the ambulances within the respective districts was being coordinated at a local level. Uh, we set out to do a census of ambulances within the region and um, map the stations of the various ambulances within the region. Ambulances provided by the EMS, uh, those under local government and those under the private not-for-profit. This allowed us to kickstart a model of community ambulance service. The coming in of emergency coordinator with the regional ambulance, I think has made our work a little bit easier and a relief to the department. Because you see, if in the region they call and you respond, we are sure we are not getting very bad patients who have also been affected by delay in accessing transport. Through the Ministry of Health Emergency Medical Services Coordination Centers, we can be able to coordinate and be able to send ambulances to the different locations. Take an example, if it's a mass casualty incident, through the coordination center, ministry can be able to send more ambulances to the scene. Like if you look backwards, uh, we used to have only one ambulance. But here, even if another ambulance in Kampala, others can still be recalled from other districts and another referral can be done. All 14 regions 
received desk funds to support communication and coordination of emergency medical care services across the country. Most of the patients who come, if they are coming with an ambulance, if not, they come, they come with a, a nurse, which wasn't the case before. And even before they get to the unit, the ambulance coordinator will call the health worker on duty. They'll tell them so and so is coming and this is what they have. But your man no one eh, for not see dainty. Bamuto mela nakagali mani gachi fuba. Abasa oba bonanga umana tachi se batu sindi fem lago and the ulen si ya ida batu tamu na basa oba tu tuala twatu ke mlago era bagemagana na basa wabere batu kola ku bulungi no batu la bilire era batu le kanga bulichimu batu batu taire ko buidanda bi batu taire kwa madi oxygen ngera ali kunte kate kanu njino ngabali tu fa ku ino batu tola ko waire chukumi e paka bwetu aterera bavwa yo twaira ngatulivalam over 4000 690 critically ill patients across all the regions have been safely transferred and managed between the months of July 2021 and January 2022. The project was able to develop a basic curriculum for emergency medical services that was utilized to train over 511 healthcare workers in 14 regions across the country. We realized that we needed to do an emergency uh, medical training, which we conducted. And uh, we trained health workers in general hospitals and also health center fours. In being able to identify uh, emergency signs from patients, being able to do an intervention. We had a training as the hospital, as well as the emergency department on best practices, so as we can help to treat and uh, uh, triage our patients appropriately in the department. As I talk now, we have a triage place, we have uh, uh, the, the, the beds are color coded, and uh, we are able to extend the emergency services uh, uh, appropriately. After triage, then we see which patient goes to red area, yellow, and those ones green. Then these ones who come maybe when they are dead already, we take them to the mortuary. And many of these complications can actually be prevented by providing ideal emergency care services, which we have uh, demonstrated through the protocols uh, using the ABCDE approach, which is quite simple, uh, uh, cost effective in a way that doesn't require a lot of resources to apply these skills. The training also equipped us with skills on managing other conditions other than to do with COVID. That is, uh, in case of trauma, accidents, some of the, the health, actually the health workers, most people there were trained about how to handle RTAs, how to stabilize fractures, how to handle patients who are basically ill, bleeding from trauma. Additionally, the project was able to procure and deliver basic emergency care kits to each of the trained facilities. The documentation has improved so, so much because when you check on the current register, uh, it, it has a lot of things which were not previously there in the, in the previous register. Like there are those columns which include the ambulatory status of a patient. We just had a counter book, eh? so we could just write in the counter book. Sometimes we could miss out even some patients. We could not even make uh, monthly reports even uh, daily reports. But these days, at the end of the 24 hours, we make daily reports. Going forward, I think we've done a good job of lobbying for people to come together. Some people keep sharing documentation that IDI has supported, referral forms, registration books, emergency unit uh, clerkship forms. But now it's time for a broader population to know about these things beyond the few that were trained. And in addition, it's time for the community to be sensitized of their role too in emergency care. The really important thing is being able to build back better after COVID. 
So you start off with an emergency, but use these initiatives to end up with an emergency medical services system that is much stronger after COVID than before. And we are really grateful to all the partners that have been able to help the ministry working together provide safer care for Ugandans.